Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches. Everything you see here, at least the day this goes live, is in stock and for sale. My email is still tmasso at thewatchbox.com and I would love to chat. Reach out to me to buy, trade, or sell because we do trade and we do buy. We buy what we sell, we sell what we buy, we always need inventory. So if you want to sell one watch for an entire collection, reach out to me. No upper limit in value paid. We will pay cash, wire, instant and walk you through the process to make it a no-brainer while buying your entire collection of James Ward Packard complicated pocket watches. Again, no strings attached. We make it easy to buy, trade, or sell. Team also at thewatchbox.com. Let's get started with what I consider to be a really exciting piece. Launched in 2017 and tracing its lineage back to 1992's Reference 5000, this is the Patek Philippe Calatrava 6006G. Now, it's important to remember that the 6000s came out in 2005 and it was a change to the original 5000 in that it added a pointer style date. Now that watch was 37. What makes the 6006 different is that it is 39. So in white gold, it's a little bit larger, and you can see the series distinctive lug profiles that continues to this day on the 6007 series. But this watch, having a very short production run of only about 2017 to 2000, so this is one of the rarest of the 5000, 6000, 6006, 6007 continuity. Now we have a design that was inspired by instruments on a dashboard on a 1950 sports car. So it does look like it's laid out the way a clock, a tachometer, or a speedometer would be. It's got a lot of color, and my favorite feature, if you look carefully, white varnished hour and minute hands that are skeletonized. Lots to love on the reverse side. Since the beginning, the 5000 series on powered by caliber 240 micro rotors. Now what they give you is an open case back display you get on a manual wind watch and the thin profile you get with a manual wind watch, but the convenience of an automatic anti-magnetic shock resistant, highly adjustable, precise, six position adjusted, free sprung balance, silicon hairspring, 48 hour power reserve, ceramic rotor bearings, 22 karat solid gold micro rotor, and finish worthy of the Patek Philippe seal. These are also guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds per 24 hours. Now, when I throw the watch on my wrist, you can see just how nicely it wears, but it also wears large for a 39. And the reason for that is that when you make a case small, you can make lugs larger to give them a better presence, to give them an arc and a grace and a span, almost like a suspension bridge across your wrist. It's not a big watch, but it's got big stance. It's got big presence and personality. Super thin with a domed bezel. It sits easily underneath the cuff, but I do think you need a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to wear this well, because it's going to push right out to the edge of your wrist and it's going to make itself known. Now it's funny because right here I have the Patek Philippe uh, successor to the 5170. This is the 5172 and this is a 41 millimeter watch. But to me, this doesn't wear as large as the 39 millimeter 6006. This came out in 2019 and as the replacement to the 5170, they basically hit the nail on the head right out of the gate. If you remember the original 5170 back from 2010. It was yellow gold, silver dial, stick indices, and Roman numerals. It wasn't the one the connoisseurs really wanted. Connoisseurs wanted a dark dial. They wanted a white metal. And we had to wait until, well, about 2015 to really get that. And what I love about this watch is out of the gate, you get white gold, a blue granular dial. And not only do you get Arabic numerals and gorgeous syringe hands, but you get a ton of loom for a dress watch from Patek Philippe. So now getting a little bit closer, you can appreciate some of those details I mentioned before, like the granular blue dial. It's sort of like a sandpaper texture and almost perfectly matches the Nubuck style calfskin on the strap itself. We have spectacular tiered lugs. I want to say vintage reference 2405 is where these come from, but everyone knows that the 1463 inspired these tosti tondi fluted and rounded chronograph pushers. Look at the sophistication of the case design. Patek Philippe has come a really long 
long way since its 1975 acquisition of Geneva case maker Atelier Reuni. And you can also see that we have a bubble-like sapphire designed to evoke a vintage plexiglass and a better view now of those syringe-style hands. And one of the distinctive features of these uh, 29535 caliber watches is that you can see the registers for the chrono just slightly below the cannon pinion at center. Dial side tachymeter scale, another 1463 reference. That's really a pre-1960s style tachymeter convention. Now on the reverse side, you can see we've got a capped column wheel and we have a really great looking black polished cap there. The idea behind a column wheel cap, it had a functional purpose initially. The idea being that the horns and levers could pop out of the crenellated towers if the watch got really badly shocked. So the cap was practical to retain those elements inside the crenellated towers. Over time, with case back sapphires, that became much less likely, especially in a wristwatch format. But now, completely mirror finished, the cap has another purpose, beauty. We have a little rack and this is a Paul and a Paul jumper system for the instantaneous jumping minutes. We've got a little setup right here that, let me try to remove some of that glue, actually replaces the common Patek silicon hairspring with a hand-bent ferrous overcoil. And two things you'll only see on upscale premium Patek chronographs, the metal overcoil and the lateral clutch. You might say, but Tim, silicon is more sophisticated and a vertical clutch is more efficient. Yes, but also easy to assemble and less exclusive and less beautiful. So at Patek Philippe, more expensive watches get lateral clutches and metal overcoil hairsprings, and these elements have to be adjusted by more sophisticated watchmakers. Patek has internal certifications, and lower levels are able to deal with things like vertical clutches and silicon. This is for the veterans. Bridges and plates in rhodium plated brass, chronograph elements all in satinated or polished steel. And you can see that the beveling on the edge of the brass bridges is the same quality as on the steel, which is very difficult to do because steel doesn't like to be finished. This is proving that Langa does not have a monopoly on chronograph movement finish or style. And we have hacking seconds. We have a 65 hour power reserve. We have a six position adjustment, which is exceptional as a chronometer only needs five. And on the wrist one more time, I'll show you this from a bit of a distance, I do feel this wears better than the 6006, and this wears more like a 39 on my wrist. So if you can fit a 39, game on. This is a 41, but don't be afraid. Now we're going to get a little bit bigger. Once again, I don't want you to be afraid because this is a big watch that wears small. Debitun DB28 GS Grand Bleu Grand Sport Series, 105 meters water resistant. This is how Debitun does a dive watch. This launched in 2019, and I immediately thought this is the watch that's going to define the brand. A couple of things that are very different here. First, center seconds. We don't often see it on a DB28. Second, you can see there's a minute repeater style governor off to the side. This does not have a repeater, so what's it doing there? Well, what it does is it slows down the dynamo that uses mainspring power to do this. LED, dynamo active lighting. Note how I have backlit the sapphire unidirectional rotating dive bezel, and I can light for about a minute. The watch has five days of power reserve. There's a little power reserve indicator off to the side, four LEDs, entirely self-contained. You actuate it by pressing a button at the base. And you can see once I turn off the LEDs, luminescence by Black Badger takes over. It does have passive loom. Not everyone knows that. Lots to love here. First of all, the bluing of titanium to create the dial components. That is a Debitune specialty. One, two, three shock protection springs. We've subjected this to pro tennis and golf, and this architecture has survived. Twin self-adjusting barrels. You cannot accidentally overwind them. Micro light. This engraving these tiny strakes all done by engine turning likewise on the case debitune making its cases dials and movements in house this watch with spring loaded floating lugs part of the db28 family that won the Egido back in 2011 effectively best picture at the oscars of watchmaking no fewer than six individual patents guaranteed it may be as high as seven or eight protecting the technologies you find in this watch and though it's a 44 it doesn't wear that way 13 millimeters thick with these floating lugs watch this watch disappear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist i got to wear the prototype and offer feedback back when this was in development and i got to tell you 
this is a watch you could wear all the time. You're going to think of it as your weekend watch, your party watch, your sports watch. But when you realize that it will fit underneath a dress cuff and that with these lugs, it'll fit on any wrist, you begin to get the idea that this might be your full-time companion and not a conditional escort. A really special watch from a company I absolutely adore. On the reverse side, we have more micro light engraving. We have satination, we have beveling, and then you can see this is the mechanism that underpins the tourbillon, well, not the tourbillon, the power reserve indicator on the dial set. I got a tourbillon separately for you, and that's, that's the other show this weekend. But you can see how much there is to love. All in grade 5 titanium, very easy to wear. By the way, if you're wondering which tourbillon I accidentally... Uh, spilt the beans about. It is this dive watch tour beyond, which you will find on this weekend's other inventory show. Now I'm going to jump to two watches and steel from opposite sides of the tracks. I always like to include something that's relatively affordable in these shows. So in 2023, Hashime Aseoka, who is a master known for building complications, full bespoke watches, customization, ultra high-end and expensive stuff. Well, he wanted to design a watch line that was more accessible, a little bit like Max Booser with the Mad One series, but something you can actually buy if you're a member of the general public. So last year, 2023, he came out with this, the GMT-1 from Corono Tokyo, which is a brand of watches made in Japan, just like his full-size collection, and with Japanese parts and traditional styling idioms incorporated, along with a blending of mid-20th century Swiss conventions. And so this was his first GMT watch. Steel, vintage inspired, as you can see with elements like a 38 millimeter case, an unsigned crown, a bubble-like sapphire. We have a watch that's designed to be used by travelers. And so we've got the ability to set two separate time zones on the dial. One is in a 24-hour format. The other is in a 12-hour format. We do have hacking. This is a Miyota movement, which is a Japanese-made automatic caliber. It is 42-hour power reserve, stop seconds, double time zones. And then you've got a remarkable plexiglass-like bubble sapphire and a wonderful... Norglide style detentless action to the bezel that allows you to read a third time zone. My favorite feature of this watch, this incredible minute hand, which if you look carefully, has actually been curved on a miniature rolling pin so that it always looks straight when viewed from the front. Now this is a great watch because we're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars or even $10,000 or even $5,000. So this is an easy watch to wear. And if you've got that smaller wrist, if you're a lady who likes to wear guys watches, but you do need a smaller case to meet you halfway. This is the way to go. This is really high style, designed in Japan, made in Japan, with a Japanese movement. This is a watch that combines the best of 1950s and 1940s Swiss watch design with currents in modern watch architecture and contemporary independent Japanese watchmaking thought. And you can see on the reverse side, Corona Tokyo. And designed by Hajime Asaoka, made in Japan. A really special watch that gives you a lot of value. Now, let's say you have a higher budget, but you still love the idea of fusing the best of East and West. Well, what we have here is a watch that's a collaboration between Waco, founder of Revolution and the Rake magazines, and Laurent Ferrier. Now, this is the classic micro rotor Amazonia. Launched in 2023 in steel, 40 millimeters. This is a limited edition of 15 pieces with a lot of cool elements, a lot like what you saw on the Corona a moment ago, but done to a much higher level. So we have this lovely sector style tri-Arabic small seconds dial, and it's supposed to resemble the lush canopy of the Amazon, hence the name. But you can see it's drawn from the conventions of the best 1940s, 50s, and 60s dress watches, much like what Laurent Ferrier himself would have experienced while coming up through the ranks of junior watchmakers during the period. We have white gold hands, spear-shaped or esagai. We have a large unbranded crown with an onion profile, slightly countersunk, so it doesn't stick out too much. The lovely galet, or smoothed pebble case design in steel here, so everyday durable. And then on the reverse side, you can see we've got a vintage style conceit for the design of this movement. So frosted and gilded, this is how a pocket watch would have looked, how a dress watch movement would have looked in the 
first half through early mid 20th century. So no Cote de Genève, but a wonderful frosted finish. Bevel's literally as good as it gets, this side of the likes of Romain Gautier and Grubel Forcy. You're not going to find much broader or brighter or more perfectly hand-rounded. Although Laurent Ferrier is an table sur, buying the best parts from partners, it is also going to do all of the finishing, assembly, and adjustment in-house, which is where all this decoration is coined. Now you can see, as I turn the watch through the light, look at all the elements that turn optically black. All of those are mirror finished either on a zinc plate or with diamond paste. We've got the best interior angles you're gonna find on a watch in this price range. Four of them in steel, no less, within the confines of the skeletonized balance cock. And then we have one, two, three, four on the bridges. And look how sharp that crease over the center wheel is. There are a lot of Geneva sill movements that do not have one such crease. We've got a 22 karat mass with engine turning and then a jeweled staff with a chaton center and a ratchet based winding system. So what you wind up with is an absolutely silent, imperceptible wind that energizes a three day power reserve. Now look closely and you can see under this balance, which is free sprung, equipped with an overcoil, and adjusted to six positions, we have two nickel phosphorus escape wheels. This is not a Swiss lever. There is no lever. Double direct impulse, just like Breguet's 1802 natural escapement, but brought up to the times with the use of Liga or galvanic lithography to assure perfect tolerance of the wheel system. And you can see each wheel has little columns. Those are the elements of the wheel that impulse the balance. Double direct impulse means each wheel only impulses the balance in one direction, the direction of its travel, improving chronometry, reducing maintenance requirements, and extending power reserve. Everything about this watch is superlative, and you're only going to find 15 of them made. A wonderful Nubuck-style suede feel to the leather on the top, and then Alcantara, a super high-end synthetic suede. You'll find it as the option headliner in super high-end German cars, and what you'll find is that it's standard in the best Rolls-Royce models. For example, versions like the Spectre or the Phantom, where everything starts about 400, 500,000, you'll get all your touch points like Headliner in Alcantara. You'll also find it in race cars, and Laurent Ferrier himself, a very accomplished race car driver in the 70s and 80s. Okay, we got two rather spectacular loom jobs coming up, so I'm going to see if you can identify them. You guys are sharp. I think you're going to get this one. I don't know if you're going to get the next one. What is it? Well, let's take a look. It looks like we've got a big date. It looks like we have some calculated asymmetry to the style. Notice how every disc that pops up is already luminescent. How could that be possible? Well, if you're a Lango Unzerna, you create a smoked sapphire dial on this Grand Longa One Lumen. So each disc can charge before it pops up. Three day power reserve, 40.9 millimeter platinum case, a limited edition from 2013, 200 pieces. Officially, the Zeitwerk Luminous of 2011 was the beginning of the Lumen series, but it didn't get the Lumen nomenclature. That waited until this model debuted. We have a full platinum clasp, and you can see on a Langa that is a remarkably opulent edition. And just to make sure you realize it is platinum, PT950, Brogioli, the supplier there. So if you're ever wondering why there's a Swiss hallmark on a German watch, Longa bracelets, cases, and clasps are always made by suppliers. And then we can see right here, ooh, we have FTUR. FTUR is, I believe, a Richemont owned case maker in Switzerland, which is again why you have the St. Bernard head, the Swiss hallmark on this German watch. We have a freehand engraved balance cock. We have both black polished and blued screws on this case back, German silver, nickel, copper, zinc, 
the golden hue coming from the copper, with a three-quarter plate and pivot jewels set in screw-fixed chaton. It's designed to make you think about German watchmaking, East German watchmaking, state of Saxony in the town of Glass Hut. Back in the 19th century, when the Langa family, Richard Langa, Emil Langa, F.A. Langa, were plying their trade, creating the traditions that would inform the revival of the Langa brand when it came back in 1990. And the fruits of the labor is clearly worthwhile. Now, this is the second generation Grand Langa 1 case, which means it's one millimeter smaller than the watch that came out. I believe the original Grand Langa 1 was 2003. So this is still Grand. It's not the 38 0.5 millimeter standard size, but you can see that it is a compact watch that is reasonably sized for a modern dress complication. It is thin, and the span across the wrist makes it acceptable for a 15 centimeter circumference wrist. Again, my wrist is 16, so I really think this is a watch that, despite the grand nomenclature, is more of a standard size for a men's dress watch today. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's not petite, it's not oversized, and it's an incredible foundation point if you want to build a collection of Longa, or if you just want to own one Longa, I would say get a Dotograph, a Zeitwerk, or a Longa one, and get a special Longa one. Not just yellow gold, silver dial, check the box. Get something that's great even by the standards of greatness, and this model definitely is. You can even see the engine turning of the dial side of the movement through the smoked sapphire. Three-day power reserve there. Another big loom shot coming up. Brace yourself, guys. I don't know. Maybe this one's easier to guess than the last one. But I will say this. If you guessed this one, let me uh, see if I can animate things. I don't have the nails that I used to, but I will do my best. I may have to give away the game. Okay. In white gold, Erwerk UR202. The automatic version of 2007's UR201, it helped to introduce this unique retrograding satellite display system that would come to define Erwerk's premium model line. Now you can see why I was having a little bit of trouble finding the crown just now. There is a locking system, and you can see this system is absolutely, absolutely awesome. Now you see this little sort of retrograding pantograph follower. This is a super cool element that I adore because it traces the contours of the linear scale. Now that might be easier to demonstrate in the dark. You could see that it says two, right? Well, we have a scale from zero to 60. I don't know how familiar you are with Erverk, but let's, let's follow through. So now as the two aligns with the zero, it's two o'clock, the outgoing hour exit stage left. Now it is 2.10. It's a linear scale. You read the hour on the carousel and the minute on the scale. Just like that. Very simple, extremely straightforward. We've got other things going on here, including a reserve for the power and a moon phase off to the side. And yes, I know you're wondering, there is a little luminescent lunette for the lunaire. And we have a system here that allows you to easily replace and lock down the crown so it doesn't pop out and accidentally set the time. Now the finish is fine, the mechanism is proprietary, and the module is the star of the show here. It does have a Zenith Elite base, but highly modified with an original innovation, the turbine-based pneumatic winding system. So these turbines are actually fed by air, and we have these little apertures near them. So this is an air passage here. And what I can do is I can actually lock the system if I'm super active and I want to protect the Zenith winding system against damage, I can lock it entirely. If I want some winding efficiency, but I don't want to overtax the mechanism, I can allow a little bit of air to pass through to the turbines. And if you're like me and you work in an office and you're super sedentary, well, you know what, you need maximum winding. So you want to open up the airways and allow the turbines to spin up and wind the mechanism. The underside of the watch is made of titanium. The top side is made of white gold, and it's about 44.5 millimeters across and about 53 millimeters from end to end if you measure it that way. But because you can see the pivot centers of the strap are actually underneath the extremities of the case, you will find that it actually wears a little bit smaller than those measurements suggest. This is listed as a 44.5, but it doesn't wear anything like that. I can't wear a 44.5 millimeter watch. I can wear this. Erverk, super cool stuff, lots of fun, a company that makes things that are genuinely different. 
Martin Fry is the designer of this otherworldly satellite complication, and Felix Baumgartner is the watchmaking genius behind the mechanisms. And you get the reliability of a Zenith base with the exotic module and the unmistakable design of Erwerk. Finally, and I like to end with what I think is the most exciting watch in the show, and for me, that will always be a Patek Philippe 5235 when one is available. The regulator, originally shown back in 2011, production didn't begin in earnest till 2013. They had to pause it again in 2015 on the original white gold model because the movement turned out to be that challenging to produce. By the time the rose gold model seen here came out in 2019, they had it down pat, but it was clear that when something requires Patek Philippe to expend so much energy and time, that something must be extraordinary, and truly it is. We'll start on the back. As you can see, it included an all new generation of large scale micro rotor movement, well over 30 millimeters in diameter. You can see how it fills this 40.5 millimeter case. Taking a look, the architecture is gorgeous. Look at this scalloped crescent as the edges of the bridge taper around the micro rotor and reveal the train from the barrel down to the escapement. This is not just fine finish. We've got perlage, anglage, beveling, striping, but we've got architecture, which is the size, shape, and orientation of the pieces in relation to each other, showing that not only can you build the machine, you can build it beautifully. And look at the size of the stripes on these bridges. These broad stripes were being pioneered on this model and this movement, because I can show you another Patek Philippe watch. Let's bring back the 6006. Those stripes are nothing like these. These are incredibly broad. They have an incredible color gradient from side to side that you can really see, and a shading gradient that's self-evident. The movement is a micro rotor automatic, but it's got production versions of the advanced research silicon series. This is not just, this is not the 240 micro rotor. Look how big it is. Look at the architecture. Look at the full silicon escapement. That's the lever and the wheel and hairspring. You will not find those on the tiny and vintage 240. The 240 came out in 1977. This movement came out in 2011. Now, moving from the rapturous case back to the front, I will mention this watch does have hacking seconds. Some of you will ask. Now I have answered. I hope that the watch is honor has been defended. Take a look at this regulator dial, separate seconds, minutes, and hours, annual calendar. We have a day, date, month, aperture style display, much easier to read than subdials. And we get an engraved logo in city of origin. This is not stamped on, that's engraved into a dial with vertical sterling execution of what I consider to be a DeLorean-like satination. If you can imagine stainless steel on a DeLorean, this is darker than that. This is more of an anthracite, whereas the white gold version had more of a silver. But this is a lot more intense, and you can see it makes for a great contrast between the sub-registers, the calendar discs, and the track outboard. And yes, again, because this is a very precise watch, it can be set to the second with hacking. Annual calendar, Patek Philippe's own invention from 1996. Only one correction required each year annually jump from February to March. The case of the legendary 3448 perpetual calendar comes roaring back, a look back not in anger, but wistfully, romantically, by Terry Stern and his design department. Sharp, angular lug profiles, a conical bezel, and then you can see they went all the way with a buckle used only on the 5235s, a vintage-inspired Patek Philippe spade-style pin buckle. Again, the vintage logo from the mid-century, everything about this watch, exceptional. The design, the level of execution, dial, case, movement, even the pin buckle, nothing is a default part. And with this movement having been designed for this case, the fit is hand in glove. We'll throw it on the wrist. I should mention that the white gold version of this watch is one of my absolute grails. And when I have a life milestone sufficiently important to justify a new watch, one of these along with the 5236 is going to be on my shortest of short lists. If you love what you see here, reach out to me. I am T. Masso with thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.